Yeah, yeah. Charlie Cooter, Porch Box Generic, you have speed. Thank you, guys. Um, so I wanted to start off talking about um, blame and fairness. I think that's something that unites your characters. So Kim, to start, um, why is Boney so adamant about not letting um, the investigation of Nick turn into a witch hunt? Well, I mean, she's no nonsense. You know, she's not interested in any of the media frenzy and whipping up public opinion you know, with some moral stance. I mean, that's not a fair investigation. She's by the book. She has no ego in it. She's not Im impressed by any of that. She's a very matter-of-fact, honest person, and that's just the way she does her job. And speaking of the media, how does that affect the defense case? You know, I think it's all a part of it, and what, what Tanner Bolt knows is this is all a part of it. It is about the spin of it, how you look, what they think of you, and, and how do we make them see it from our point of view. And that's kind of what being a, a, an attorney is about, either prosecutor or defense attorney. It's about making a jury see it the way that you that you see it. So so that's what that's what I feel about it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and Desi... Um, a lot of reputations are at stake in this film. It might be easy to brand him as. Are a you nervous? <laughs> just take a deep breath. Take, take a deep breath. Just relax. Just relax. We're enjoying it. Questions we've had all day. Questions we've had all day. You're best part of my day. Comfortable group of people. Just relax. I'm having a good time. Okay. Good. Um, so, um, <laughs> sorry, I got off track there. Um, I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're talking about Desi. What about Desi? Um, it might be easy to brand him as a stalker, but do you want to talk about how that might be simplistic or incorrect? Desi is spoken about throughout the movie as some sort of potential bad person, a suspect, or maybe he's kidnapped Amy. There's no way to know. So by the time you meet him in a darkened front front hallway of his house, you already are looking at him with uh, predisposed ideas. And so, and he's far from nice in those first scenes. So it was fun to play that knowing that I could be someone bad or that he could be someone nefarious. Uh, and then as Amy needs him and, and you find out more about his actual story and his just kind of single focused devotion to her and his potentially delusional ideal that he, if he had pretty Amy from high school, that they could maintain this wonderful relationship where they wear sweaters over their shoulders and khaki pants with pleats and, uh, and do it for the rest of their lives. And, uh, and once she enters his world again, I don't think he's evil in his, in his methods, but he doesn't want her to go away. And a question for the group, what was it like working with David Fincher? It was incredible. I had so much fun. I mean, you know, he's great with actors. He's a he's a visionary. He's a painter, and just it was so great to be, you know, a part of such a beautiful sort of piece of art as far as the material goes, and his his execution, and it was a blast. Yeah, I think for all of us, we feel the same way. It was just a really great experience because working with that level of brilliance, how can you not appreciate it? You know, so I I, I left wanting to be much better. Mm -hmm. Day, David demands excellence from everybody. Including and, himself. Including mm -hmm. himself. Yeah. And there's a, there's, there's a heightened level of nervousness because you want to please him, and yet he, there's a comfortability that he allows to make him feel accessible. And then he, he really encourages when you're doing something right. And there's a gleam in his eye, so you want to appease, appease him, you want to impress him, but you also know that, that he's got your back. It's a great combination. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You. Well done. You did. Hey, what's happening, movie fans? I've got an interesting movie fact for all you Fast and Furious fans out there. Even if you are not, you can still stay tuned. Now, did you know that Michelle Rodriguez, who plays Letty, did not have a driver's license before she began filming for the first movie of the series? Hmm, interesting. So I wonder which one of the team taught her to drive. Who would be your choice of driving instructor? Let us know in the comments below. That's all for today. I'm Valerie. And remember, don't bark if you can't bite. See ya.